Grace, mercy, and peace be unto you all in the name of Jesus. Amen. My friends, this morning we are wrapping up our known series. And we have, we have heard how we are known because we are intimately, fearfully, wonderfully made by our Creator. And last week, Pastor Randy talked about how we face identity crisis when we take our eyes off of what God has intended for us in our identity. But because we are known intimately by our Creator, and we have our identity secured in Christ, we live fully alive in God's grace. Jesus says very clearly in John 10, the thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. What does it mean to have the abundant life? To live life to the fullest? Does the abundant life mean that we have plenty to eat? Does it mean good health? Does it mean that we have all the money that we want? Does it mean that we have few troubles to bother us? Does it mean that we live life in lush, green pastures? Does it mean that we have a comfortable and convenient life? Well, my friends, I'm going to warn you that the world's idea of an abundant life is very much different than what it means to have an abundant life in Christ. Abundant life living fully alive in God's grace. You see, living fully alive in God's grace, it starts way back at creation. There in the beginning, God made everything good and right and perfect. Man and woman, they were fearfully and wonderfully made special They were given all that they needed and given charge to have dominion over God's creation. But everything changed when sin entered the world. And since then, we have lived in a broken world that distorts God's perfect and good creation. Let me introduce you to something foreign that many of you Texans understand, to help us understand how sin affects the abundant life. I just called and said there's no school for the Garibrand boys. A snow day! Yes, I know it's such a foreign concept to many of you who only understand and experience two seasons, hot and hotter, <laughs> with, with maybe two days where you have to wear a jacket. But, but for us northerners, the snow day is a great day of joy. It's jubilance. It's pure bliss. Life is good. No school. And so Rachel and I did what we usually did when the weather was was bad and and there was no school. (laughs) Yes, even though the roads were too bad to have school, we navigated those bad roads, so we took our boys sledding the fresh air, the thrill of the slopes. But it's not perfect. It's cold. Wet clothes from sweating of climbing back up the hills and and the melting of snow on your clothes makes you even more cold. And the crashes, oh, the crashes. Oh, 
Just like sin entering God's perfect and great creation and bringing with it brokenness and imperfection, a snow day really isn't all that perfect and good and the abundant life. Actually, that illustration very much undermines just how much sin truly changed God's good and right and perfect creation. Sin did not only change everything, it ruined everything. It brought brokenness. It broke our relationship with God. It brought death something that God never intended. Romans 6.23 starts off by saying, the wages of sin is death. Simply put, sin causes a traumatic disruption to the life God has originally planned for us. But God would not let sin win, and nor would he let the thief win. You see, God the Father sent His Son, Jesus, to reclaim God's creation and redeem God's people from the clutches of sin and the thief who tries to steal and kill and destroy. Jesus, the Good Shepherd, journeyed to the cross and rose from the dead to give you and me, to give us all an abundant life in Him. Jesus says, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. It is Jesus who restores our relationship with the Father. Yes, Jesus died so that we may live fully alive in God's grace. It is true. The wages of sin is death. But the free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. In the abundant life, the, the abundant life that we have, living fully alive in God's grace, it is rooted in the hope that, of that free gift of eternal life. Living fully alive in God's grace is about grace being greater than our sin. It's about a deep down assurance that you belong to the Savior. Jesus says, I am the good shepherd. I know my own and my own know me. The abundant life is about the security that we have in that restored relationship with God in the eternal life that he has promised us. And that promise is the source of our joy. No matter what circumstance we may face on a daily basis. You see, God may not guarantee us constant happiness in this life, but he does promise to be an ever-flowing source of joy. The joy in the promise, the source of all our hope, that penetrates our core to our very essence is the abundant life of living fully alive in God's grace. Romans 15, 13 says this, May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing so that the power of the Holy Spirit, you may abound in hope. And Jesus wants you to live abundantly with joy and hope that is secure in him. Jesus says, Truly, truly, I say to you, whatever you ask of the Father in my name, he will give it to you. Until now you have asked nothing in my name. Ask and you will receive that your joy may be full. My friends, what steals your joy? What kills your hope? What destroys your life of living fully alive in God's grace? 
The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. The thief, be it Satan or Satan's tools or sin's consequences, it is whatever takes our eyes off of God's grace. The thief wants us to be robbed of living fully alive in God's grace. And sadly, it is too easy for us to follow the thief. Last week, Pastor Randy talked about our identity crisis. Yes, it's too easy to lose our identity into that of insecurity. To lose our identity into that of comparisons. To lose our identity into that of guilt and shame and despair. To lose our identity thinking we don't need God. Or to lose our identity thinking God doesn't want us. And when the thief has swallowed our identity, we see that life apart from God turns out to be not life at all, just brokenness and despair. But fortunately, my friends, we need not wallow in despair. Praise be to God that Jesus came to give us life. For while we were still weak at the right time, Christ died for the ungodly. It is because of Christ's death that we sinners, we the lost sheep, that we have life. Life abundant. Life that is fully alive in God's grace. Paul, while writing from prison, he gives us a wonderful example of what it means to live fully alive in God's grace in spite of facing circumstances that without God, one would most certainly have despair. Paul says this, Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say rejoice let your reasonableness be known to everyone. The Lord is at hand. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God, and the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. My friends, living fully alive in God's grace is for the here and the now, regardless of our circumstances. And it is also looking ahead for, with hope of that which is to come. And as we look for the hope to come, to be made complete in Christ in eternity, we live now navigating a broken world with the hope that the best is yet to come. You see, living fully alive is to live in forgiveness. Think about a time where you needed forgiveness and the joy, the relief, the security that you found in being forgiven. At the end of chapter 26 and the beginning of chapter 27 in the Gospel of Matthew, we see Peter's denial of Christ immediately followed by Judas trying to return 30 pieces of silver. Both have great remorse over what they did. Matthew 26, 75 says this, And Peter remembered the saying of Jesus, before the rooster crows, you will deny me three times. And Peter went out and wept bitterly. And then Matthew 27, verse 3 says this. Then when Judas, his betrayer, saw that Jesus was condemned, he changed his mind and brought back the 30 pieces of silver to the chief priest and the elders, saying, I have sinned by betraying innocent blood. 
What was the difference between Peter and Judas? Not remorse. Both had that. The difference was that Peter believed in the hope and the promise to come. Peter lived fully alive in God's grace of forgiveness found in God. Judas, he was stuck in his despair. He did not believe that he could be forgiven for what he did. Judas was stolen by the thief. The thief wants you to believe that God would not want to forgive you. But the abundant life is living in the hope and security of forgiveness. Living fully alive in God's grace is to live with contentment. It is hard to live with contentment at times. Been there, struggled with that, continue to struggle with that, do I? Growing up, my family did not have much at all. We were definitely poor. I distinctly remember one Friday night when I was in junior high. And we were about to eat dinner and my mom was wondering what we could eat. Oh, we always had stuff to eat. Canned Spam and canned vegetables. Not much, not great. But this particular Friday, it wasn't payday. And so we were limited to what we had. My dad, sitting at the dinner table in his bib overalls after having worked outside, he said, Sharon, how many Benny's coupons do we have? He must have seen the hope light up in my and my sister's eyes. Benny's. Oh, the greatest pizza on the face of the earth. You see, Benny's Pizza, they had these coupons on the pizza box. And you cut them out after you ate your pizza and you held on to them. And when you had 10 coupons, you got a free pizza. So my mom went to the cupboard and she opened up the door and she starts counting those coupons. And that particular night, we had 10. And so my dad says, Stephen, go call and order the pizza. And I, I go and I, I look up in the yellow pages. So this is a long time ago. and um, <laughs> Order the pizza. And off we were to drive to Benny's to get it. In our old 15-passenger van that my dad had to staple a sheet of plastic from the ceiling to the floor behind the first bench of seats to keep in what heat we had. And so we went and we picked up that pizza. And once we picked it up, we put it on the dash. And as my dad began to drive away, that pizza slid off, that pizza box slid off the dash and fell onto the floor. My mom and sisters were in tears. My dad just clutching the steering wheel, looking straight ahead as if he could ignore what had happened in the hopes that by his ignoring it would undo what had happened. And I unbuckled and got down on the floor of that gritty, dirty van and I tried to pick up the pizza and put it in the box. And let me tell you, that was the grittiest, best-tasting pizza <laughs> in the entire world. Yes, when we live fully alive in God's grace, we live with contentment. Again, Paul, in his letter to the Philippians, he writes these words of contentment, even though he is facing such horrible and trying conditions. Paul says this, not that I am speaking of being in need, for I have learned in whatever situation I am to be content. I know how to be brought low, and I know how to abound. In any and every circumstance, I have learned the secret of facing plenty and hunger, abundance and need. I can do all things through him who strengthens me. Lastly, my friends, living fully alive in God's grace is being hemmed in by Christ. 
Psalm 139 speaks about how God knows us, but it also speaks to how God protects us. Psalm 139.5 says this, You hem me in behind and before and lay your hand upon me. My friends, you see, we are living in a broken world that is much like a ride at an amusement park, a roller coaster, as Pastor Randy talked about. Sometimes life is like a ride that is a roller coaster with scares and thrills and going by so fast that we feel it's too difficult to catch our breath. And sometimes the ride is slow, perhaps even tranquil. Maybe it's like it's a wonderful world. Um, Sometimes it goes by from fast to scary and to slow with such an abruptness that we can't make sense of what is happening. But when we are living fully alive in God's grace, we are on this ride being hemmed in by Christ. Christ is the harness on the roller coaster. Christ is the safety belt on the ride. Christ is the lap bar that you pull down to keep you in place for protection. Christ is the parachute as you jump out of a plane. Regardless of how unnerving the ride may be or how enjoyable it may be, Christ hems us in and takes us on that journey to the eternal life that he has prepared for us. That is our source of hope. That we have joy in this life, in the here and now, knowing the best is yet to come because of what Jesus did. Christ, the good shepherd, who leads us sheep to greener pastures, who leads us through the valley of the shadow of death, who leads us into eternal life that he secured for us by his laying down of his own life. My friends, The hope and promise of that is truly how we live fully alive in God's grace. Amen.